On watering the street, there are three different types of uh, irrigation systems. One is the sprinkler irrigation system, where you have pipes underneath the ground, and you have above ground sprinklers that spray in a fixed uh, direction, or they could be moving. There's also uh, above ground sprinklers just connected to a hose. There's uh, manual watering, which you know you just take along the hose and just spray everywhere. And finally, there is the drip uh, irrigation system, where everything is pretty much below ground, and the pipes are connected directly to the roots of the plant, delivering water straight to the roots. However, all of these have essentially fundamental problems. First is that most like the, especially the irrigation systems, you have to dig underneath the ground, you have to dig up your lawn, dig up whatever, and install the pipes there, which is costly, it's tedious, and for the time being, very unsightly. For above ground systems, there's a lot of problems with, pipe, with pipes and hoses. You have to carry things along, you can get tangled up in it. And we think that this is all very confusing for the average homeowner, and there's just no point. And yeah, he, this this is a very average. This is the average confused homeowner after using these products, and it, it's also um, very hazardous for unfortunate So, so this is our solution. Uh, our solution. Uh, our solution is Robolacky, and we base our goals off of the acronym CUA, which is cost efficiency, user friendliness, and adaptability. So our program, our our project, Robolacky, it's a mechanical and electrical system. As a track guidance rail and as an easy action sprinkler swap. So this is a, a block diagram of our project. This is for the electronic components. And basically what we have is a microcontroller. It's the brain of our project. And of, uh, it's power, a 9 volt battery, and a 12 volt battery. A 12 and it's volt recyclable. Yeah, no, those are both recyclable, yes. <laughs> a 12 volt, 12 volt battery is for the motors. So because the motors require a lot of current. The 9 volt battery powers our microcontroller, our ultrasound sensor detectors, the input, and a control valve which lets the water go through. This is a, a really early this sketch of our project. And what you have here is this robot system that will move along a tract. And the tract, a user can place a tract anywhere he or she wants to. Yeah, and so, in, the, in the backyard. It's, it's really adaptable and it's, and it's cheap to make. Um, we, have, we have two large wheels and two small wheels, so you can't really see it down there. They, they flank the track so that they follow it. Follow the track. Um, we have our sprinkler here, and the sprinkler, the head of the sprinkler can be changed for a situation, so you can have an all-around sprinkler, or if, you, if you're going around, um, in the edge of your backyard, you have a sprinkler that aims towards the middle. Yeah, like if you have a rose yeah, garden yeah. surrounding your, gar um, your backyard, yeah, you so can... So it just depends on what kind of property you own. And um, the hose is connected here, and then to the sprinkler. And the hose will be running through the PVC pipe, which is hollow, yeah. so that there's no danger of uh, snagging it on rocks and stuff. And finally, uh, not shown here, but uh, implemented in our design, is the ultrasound, ultrasonic sensors, which uh, actively detect any obstacles, be it like holes on the uh, near the track or rocks on the track, so that instead of having your uh, our robo lackey plow through the um, backyard and you know flipping over or whatever, it, it stops all operations when it detects an or obstacle. Another problem we consider is that like like your common backyard animals such as moles or groundhogs, if they dig holes a lot, it can also disrupt our, our project. And if it disrupts our project, like if it's moving and it gets caught in the hole or something, and you can't shut it off, it'll waste a lot of water. Yeah. So what we do is is like within a certain distance, um, if our ultrasound sensors detect something, they shut the entire system off. It'll stop the electricity and it'll stop the water flow. Yeah. And water, if water, saving water is really what this project is all about. So these are our future requirements, also known as Rust, um, robot, user interface, sprinkler, and track. So our robot is powered by a rechargeable battery, as the, the electric flow valve, um, which is controlled by the microcontroller. There's two powerful motors down there that help us move over most like uh, backyard terrain. Like it's not, it's not going to go up a very steep mountain because that's just yeah. And, and if, you have, if you have a backyard, if you have a lawn on a mountain, then you're doing something. <laughs> doing something yeah, um, we have the two front wheels that rotate to um, go down the track and it uh, shuts off through the ultrasound sensors. Now the user interface is very simplistic. Just 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 two buttons. Uh, one to turn on. One to turn on the the the, uh, opera the operating the operating system, and then one to begin the operation. So you press it once, you set off on the track, and it does its thing. Yeah. Um, sprinkler system is 
just the adaptable heads that you have that can be mounted on a robot. And the microcontroller controls when the control valve lets the water through, making it sprinkle on or off. And then we also have our track, which is a, a light, easy to assemble material. And we want to use a PVC pipe, which is uh, adaptable. And it's cheap. It's cheap. So it makes our, um, it makes our cost pretty low. So the entire system was estimated cost about $250, including elect electronic and mechanical components. Yeah, and you'll save much more on, uh, yeah. on water. Versus a, a drip irrigation system is, I think it's something like $5,000. $5,000 per system installed. Yeah. Yeah, that includes, actually doesn't include uh, digging up everything and hiring professional services. That's just the system, the uh, the computer system that you install outside in your backyard to control, you know, uh, turn this on at this time, turn this on at this time. Whereas this one, you just set up your track, you put it on, you set up the, uh, the, the sprinkler head, and it does everything for you very cheaply. So, possible impacts on our lawn ecology, like why we should care, because grass is a natural element of our environment, and it's part of our culture, and mostly like in the, like, I would say in the 70s, it's really important because the ideal American home was like a suburban area, a beautiful front lawn, beautiful back lawn. It's part of it's it's a hobby because more well, it's hobby because homeowners like to have their lawn clean, clean and well, green, clean and green, and very well cut and organized. And it also contributes to the aesthetic beauty of a neighborhood or increases the property value of a home. Yeah. Um, our project it will reduce lawn disturbance because we have minimized the components needed to water your lawn. It also reduces reduces the, the waste of water or fertilizer because instead of just like dragging your hose around and aiming the spot for a long while and you don't know how much water you're going out, you have a time interface that when it follows a track, it will cover the areas. You cover the areas evenly and with the precise amount of water that you need. As control settings, which is basically your timer, and it's possible to adjust your timer. So if you had, if you wanted, to, if it was a hotter day, if you wanted to spray like a, a minute in one area before you move on, or if it's just like a, if a, cooler, it was a cooler day, day maybe it's a, it's look, looking a little bit brown, or you just want to add a little bit more water. And it's there. also very good for like many climates around like our country or any country. Oh, okay. Um, it's, it, Don't forget the Oh yes, a well kept lawn. It contributes to carbon sequestration, which reduces global warming. And like per lawn, its impact isn't that great. When you think of, but when you think of all the homeowners that have their lawns throughout the country or any other country, it'll add up. Yeah. And a lot of things about like uh, to reduce global warming, it's a lot of small key factors that we haven't really put a lot, place a lot of importance it's on. Like if, for example, if you want to make a big change in your life, you don't go out and, for example, if you wanted to quit smoking, you know, you don't just go out and stop smoking. You have to adjust your lifestyle. Uh, step by step, and then that's how you can not only achieve your goal, but stay with that goal and not relapse back into um, previous uh, states. It, one more thing is uh, it's good maintenance for its like benefit for communities. So if you have parks or recreational areas, a lot of like parks like locally, they aren't that well kept or great, and this deters like children or families from using them. But if you if it's and one one reason of this because is um, the sprinkler system to water them is very costly, especially for communities. So by using our our cheaper system, if you have a lawn that's well kept, a green space is a, that's well kept, it can attract uh, the families, families, the children, picnics, yeah, and it'll get people out of the house. Yeah, this is, that's a good, that's what we need this yeah. this time. So here's some uh, possible impacts on the lawn economy. This is the share of market by specific uh, system so far. So as you can see, the sprinkler is usually the most. Um, <laughs> Comment. I have college class. <laughs> it's, it's usually the most Can widely we? used among homeowners just because it's 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 deceptively easy to set, to set up. You put it right in the middle of your lawn and then you forget about it and then a lot of water is wasted. Yeah. Uh, drip uh, follows closely even though it is easier to, uh, um, excuse me, harder to set up. A lot of people do try to you know shell out the extra money to well, use One thing it. about drip is it's usually more for like industry. Here, I take yeah, this. It's not usually for My arms have, are shaking from yeah. holding it like that. And uh, finally manual. And some people do, you know, somehow enjoy walking outside at 7 a.m. and, and, spr and, spr and sprinkling everything. Yeah. So this is what we predict the share of market will look like after we um, uh, patent this and put it into the market. As you can see, the RoboLikey 
will take up a larger share just because it's so much easier to use. It's so much. It's 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 cheap. It's it's effective, and people will realize the importance of it and just the the, the cost efficiency of it. It also it also saves saves time, and some people might enjoy watering the lawn. But with our like busy lives, you might not have the time to do that, and which will result in your precious lawn dying, yeah, and looking bad, decomposing, yeah, decomposing, and thus. This is a very good solution for those who are low on time. So, uh, uh, let me say again, you want to look for the name Robolacki. Thank you very much. <laughs>